time with my uh, great friends here to do uh, more SB tier list and stuff. I'm to a answer, great friend. Uh, uh, to, but to answer your question, Penguin, I think they would taste like steam and your mouth burning off because Titan's body heat are extremely high. Oh. Huh. Yeah, also... I guess that makes sense. The and first... the actual... Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry, real quick. And, like, you can't even actually, like, properly prepare it because once a Titan dies, their body starts to vaporize very quickly. Oh, that yeah. does not sound good. Yeah. Uh, first SCP, we really don't have to talk about this, is 682. Lizard. Big lizard. The Large. piece of shit that keeps breaking out of containment. Big boy. Hog the big boy. Few, uh, there are few anything he has not spoken badly about. I was going to say people, but he talks badly about objects too, so. <laughs> yeah. He's just an asshole. The thing is, you, you I don't probably, think... Oh, sorry. You, you, you could probably set an orange in front of him and he'd start shit-talking the orange's mother. <laughs> oranges don't even... Wait, how the fuck would he do that, though? Because uh, that's actually kind of impressive thinking about it. An orange born to a tree and he would shit-talk the orange's tree. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um... I don't think it would be ZK because I don't think he, in reality, himself. Okay, he would have to uh, be right? tag team. Yeah? You're not streaming in Discord. Oh shit! I got you. I forgot to do that. that. Oh, now I gotta. Get was it all the talk? Was it all the talk about hermaphroditus and titans? <laughs> Maybe, but uh, I don't think he will be put in ZK because he would actually need the help of others to probably pull that off. And he doesn't like others, does he? No, not at all. I don't think he even likes his father, to he be honest. He could be that class on his own. He just wouldn't want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking more like XK. But he's lazy. Is the giant, does the giant lizard have like the mentality of a dog? No. But like more advanced? Because like he's lazy, but also he wants to end the fucking world. The thing is, he, he... Oh yeah, cats. cats! That makes more sense. That makes cats sense. are lazy and they want to take over the world. He not all cats. Not a cat. I can name one type, like one breed of cat that does not want to take over the universe. So, the thing is, I'm thinking XK. What do you guys think? Because, I mean, he keeps breaking out. They can't even contain him. Hmm. And plus, well, that's thing, you can't like, be. Yeah, you're saying, catch it. Oh shit! But they, but they still are able to constantly grab him and bring him back into containment. So I question how he, on his own, could just end all of humanity. Right. Honestly, I mean, like, they're only able to get him in containment simply because they know how to contain him. It's just the issue is. Even though they know how to contain him, he's so destructive, he still finds ways out. Yeah. It's like... Uh, Why don't they kill him? They've Fate. thrown him through a sun, thrown him through a black hole, had him vaporized from existence, and he still lives. Why don't they try harder? Why don't they try harder? <laughs> you can't try harder than that. They come... They vaporize everything... Instead of being vaporized, he smack talks the gate guardian. I, Dragon, I have the feeling that you're just gonna eventually slowly turn into that one guy who's constantly like doing the bootstrap argument, but for the SCP Foundation. <laughs> like, ah, just pick yourself up by the bootstraps and get rid of that invincible lizard. Come on. <laughs> so. Hatchet. Back in my day, we were able to kill unstoppable lizards with one missile. I mean, that's how we took care of Hitler, right? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, no, he took care of himself. He took care of Hatchet. What the fuck? I. Well, then why? 
Why is the, that the first thing you think? Oh anyway, my god. Anyway, Wait, uh, what? I should, so, Hatchet, what are you thinking? Are you thinking he should be taken off of XK? I think, I think when he's on his own continent. Like, well, once he's he starts always working on his own. Yeah, like, if he was to hypothetically start actually working with others, then I think it could easily turn into a ZK, but... With other people... Wait, no. Jerry, there is another SCP that he, he likes. The computer. The computer. Oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, let's see. The what? The what now? 079, the, the old AI. It's a sentient AI. <laughs> I'm just going to put it a constant for now because we don't believe he would have tag team with anyone. I like how <laughs> I like how something a, a phrase is more powerful than the indestructible lizard at the moment. <laughs> well, yeah, because because a phrase can be said by anyone, and the lizard is one dude, <laughs> one god of the most people. They just hates everyone. All right. This next SCP is oh. SCP-689, Haunter in the Dark. My head hurts severely after laughing. Are you okay? Yeah, I, I've i been having a lot of migraines lately. And laughing oh. seems to have set them in place. I, I, I think I should be good. Okay. Anyway. Wait, wait before you start the SCP, uh, this has nothing to do with that, but my dog sleeps with her eyes open and it's creepy as fuck because like they have the like weird little skin thing that goes over their eyes and it's like oh what the fuck and like when you you could tell she's about to wake up because it like retracts and it's fucking weird as shit is your dog satan <laughs> i no she's very that secondary eyelid yeah she's just okay, I, I think she's too stupid to be satan like, I adore her with all my heart. I would die for her. But she's not the most intelligent being on the planet. Anyway. She's kind of dumb. She twitches when she sleeps, too. I have to. I should probably take That's sleepwalking. That yeah. might just be her having a dream. Normal for every okay. animal to have some amount of sleepwalking. Okay, mm -hmm. then that's less concerning. Next one, uh, my dog who passed away did that a lot too, twitching asleep. Okay, that that reassures. Yeah, I was about to say you don't want to start it with my dog that passed away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's reassuring, right? Just, just like a hindsight, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's kind of. Yeah, like like we're trying to comfort your dog's all right. And the first thing you say is, "Oh yeah, I have this dog that's like super fucking dead, and, and they twitched a lot in their sleep." So yeah, I don't know why, but like the movement of twitching while you're sleeping has forever been ingrained in my mind as a bad thing because uh, we used to live with this group that did drugs. Like dogs, it's actually a good thing. It means they have an active mind. That means Aww. the stupid or dead or not dead animal is. If they are twitching in their sleep, that means their brain still works. Aww. Yeah. Alright. So, so, so feel good about your sleeping twitchy dog. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on to the SCP. Chimkin. SCP-689 <laughs> appears to be a small green soapstone statue. 30 centimeters in height. It is carved in the semblance of what appears to be an unknown deity of the underworld. A seated skeletal figure with hands uh, clasped over its knees. It was, it was discovered by Redacted during one of the pre-war German archaeological expeditions in the Redacted area of India and obtained after the war by the OSS. It is, its location is, during the war is unknown. SCP-689 is completely inert for as long as it's being watched by at least one human being. 
Normal behaviors such as blinking do not appear to interrupt the watching for its purpose, but the lapse in attention, however, momentarily renders the observer vulnerable. As soon as SCP-689 is unobserved, it vanishes from its current location. Within 15 to 20 seconds, one person who has previously viewed SCP-689 dies instantaneously. SCP-689 reappearing on top of the remains. If no previous viewers are presently alive, it reappears in the same place as previous. Tests have established that this effect is not operative on non-humans, but that any human being who has ever directly viewed SV-689 is potentially vulnerable. No consistent cause of death has been found, with autopsy results ranging from heart attacks and strokes to complete rupture of all internal organs. The mechanism by which the victim is selected is currently unknown. Uh, save the uh, preference seems to be given in persons and crowds of otherwise surrounded by large numbers of people, presumably to increase the number of people viewing the statue. Recorded images of SCP-689 do not appear to have this property. Due to the potential for a chain reaction, once SCP-689 is allowed to leave the chamber, it is considered absolutely critical that all personnel who have seen the object be terminated immediately on any lapse in, in observation. And that's the description. Pretty much. If you have ever viewed the statue, uh, like, if anyone goes up to you and be like, hey, you're on duty to watch the statue, you're fucked. Yeah. Like, that is a death sentence. It so is, I'm gonna guess the last... The ultimate notice me senpai or else. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just call the statue a fucking yandere? Well, yandere soap statue? No! <laughs> yes. Nobody wants everyone to notice it. Everyone. Never look away. Notice me. So it looks notice like. <laughs> it also looks like you can start a chain reaction if, if they're not careful. Yeah, but. Like, it would be significantly more dangerous if, like, uh, recorded media could pass on the effect, but since it doesn't, I would say at most city. Yeah, yeah, and plus... Given the potential of that chain reaction. And plus, it's not as powerful as 173. Like, if you blink, you're fucked. Yeah. She isn't with the blinking thing. Like, don't you have, like, a second? I think even less than that. It's, it's pretty much instantaneous. Yeah, <laughs> you don't ever want to stop viewing. But, uh, Jiria, what's your thoughts before I put in it? Discord, there we go. What? Okay. Anyway, now that Discord's allowed me to speak while I was talking and it not responding, fucking does sometimes. Where did it go? Here. I do agree with it, plus the classification that it's city at most. Since yeah. Not only. While it is dangerous and could set off a horrible chain reaction, it is easy to actually uh, keep under control thanks to the iPod. Oh, yeah. Well, no, the iPods wouldn't work. It said non human beings wouldn't work. From what I heard, they were used at some point to help hold them down. Wait, the iPod? I thought the iPods were used on 173, not Haunter in the Dark. Why are we talking? Oh, yeah, I think they were used on 173, not Haunter in the Dark. Oh, okay. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, Cherry. I mean, they, they pre um, both do the exact same thing <laughs> in a way. <laughs> how now, many, how, may I ask how many SPCs are different variations of Notice Me Senpai or else? <laughs> oh, okay, question. Question, question, question. Would the statue stop killing people if you gave it a kiss kiss? No. Highly unlikely. No. No, it would still kill you. What, what if you give kiss kiss? I'm going to point out even anime young days are likely to kill you when they when you kiss them, so Fair point. Fair point. Well, it depends on the young day. 
Yeah. Why? The when did the Yon Berry trope uh, become a thing? I think the... As far as I know, the first anime that, like, really kicked off the trope was uh, Future Diary. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that Which anime is, any good? Like, I've heard about it constantly, I, but, like... Uh, I absolutely adore it. It's one of my favorites. I highly recommend it once, uh, once, once you are old enough to watch it. Because, oh, yeah, that yeah. That's too old for you, Penguin. That's too old for you. Yeah. My first anime that wasn't Pokemon is something I deeply regret, but it was fucking uh, Dragon Maid. I thought it was a cute story about uh, two, like, two lesbian lovers. It is not, and I regret it deeply. Excuse me. I was there for Wholesome, and I got weird shit, and also the fucking creator of Dragon Maid's a fucking creep. Uh. In the manga anime, there are so many questionable things. It's just like... They... Oh my gosh. In the second season's worst, they added boobs to a child character. The weirdest part is the fact that some people on Twitter were defending that character. It's like, dude, what the fuck? Is it supposed <laughs> no. to be a one dragon, one, and dragons in reptiles as a whole, when they have lung capacity added, they get throat items, not boobs. Throat. Throat. I stopped watching it before the beach episode because I was very scared and I was like, oh, leave yeah, those that's, children alone. Yeah, that's one of the shows that like I like, but it's very much a guilty pleasure because, yeah, it's, it's I fun. wanted to see the so cute lesbians. Anyway. I, th- I like the two main adult well, characters. They're a cute a relationship. Guilty, guilty that, wow, watching this makes me feel kind of uncomfortable, but I like it. And you know what? I'm not watching it. I know I don't want an anime that makes me feel uncomfortable. That's entirely fair. I wanted to see the lesbians who are fine with watching the anime that makes them uncomfortable, but they still like. That's, yeah, that's fun. Very yeah. understandable. Anyway, next SCP. Um, I want to say this now. Um, I forgot what it's called, but if you don't. Uh, but the phobia of being oh. stared at or with eyes, uh, you might not want to listen to this. <laughs> We're staring at you, right? I'm not affected by that or phobia. Anyway, SCP-718 is an eye, roughly the size of a baseball. It is supported by a long, thin stalk made of tendon and blood vessels. It stands 1.22 meters tall, and appears to need no nourishment nor excrete any waste. The eye will turn and follow any living thing in its field of vision. The stalk is capable of limited movement and will follow living things for a short distance. SCP-718 will also stare at any observational equipment in its containment area if no living area, no living things are present. SCP-718 appears to prefer staring at humans more than other animals. SCP-718 stare can induce discomfort and paranoia in a very short time, often resulting in a subject's attempt to destroy SCP-718. The eye, if damaged, will explode, showering clear fluid all over nearby surfaces before shriveling into powder. Anything the fluid touches will develop a clear blister-like bubble that slowly turns that slowly turns black. After 24 hours, the blister will burst in a 20.32 centimeters copy of SV-718 will emerge, growing to full size over the course of a few days. This has been shown to occur on all organic surfaces and many inorganic. inorganic. On living subjects, copies of SCP-718 are apparently affixed. Attempts to surgically remove SCP-718 causes extreme pain in the subject, though removal is possible. Aside from a vague and persistent desire to destroy other copies of SCP-718, the host suffers from no ill effects after removal. If SCP-718 is not removed from a living subject, testing indicates that subject will become 
comes able to see through SP-718. Vision with SP-718 is different as data expunged is now visible as the expense of more conventional sight. This has an extremely detrimental effect on subjects drastically lowering mental stability and often leading to uh, unaliving. The death of a host will cause a SP-718 oh, no, you... to burst. No, remember the, 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 the term that I came up with is auto-homicide. Okay, auto-homicide, that's right. 86 instances of SP-718 are currently contained within containment, containment changer, cham chamber. Here's the thing. If the data expunged, there's a link I can go to with it. So if you want me to read that, I can read that. Find out what the data expunged is. I want to know what the data expunged is. I'm actually kind of curious. Alright. Okay. Ah, here it is. Wait. What the fuck? Uh oh. Garrett, what's the, the what the fuck? No, it's just a, a list of SCP designations and multiple different SCPs oh. of those designations and containment method. And that's what the data expunged is. Let me see if I can find 718. Let's see, 718, 718, ah. It says the exact same shit we just read. So maybe it makes them see an ever-growing list of SCPs. Oh. That's concerning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... get to glimpse into our reality where everything is technically fiction. Yeah. The most popular ones that are the on two on top. Wait, hold on. No, this is different. I didn't re look at it first. No, the, the SCPs that are listed are combined. The first one is SCP-035 oh. and 096. Like physically combined or like list SCP-035 covers most of SCP-096's face. Portions that are not oh, fully no, covered no. are obviously obfuscated by the corrosive substance due to SP-035's continually seeing SP-096's face. SP-096 constantly attempts to claw it off, preventing SP-035 from taking full control. So it's a list of co combined SCPs. Like SCPs that are combined with these eyes? Well, not all of them, but uh, some of them are just a list combined of other SCPs. Let me see, go back to 718. Ah! Oh wow, it's actually combined with the Haunter in the Dark. Instances of huh. SCP-718 positioned on mummified human corpses in a triangular pattern around SCP-689. Occasionally, all instances will simultaneously look away, causing SCP-689 to manifest on and terminate the SCP-718 instances which will cause additional SCP-718 to form. Instances of SCP-718 will then resume observation, manipulating SCP-689 back to its original position via the ice thoughts. Whoa. So, it took over 689 and it's manipulating it. To make more of itself. Wow. It is eye fungus. It is another eye fungus. Wait, now let's raise the question. Okay, so we all know the eye stalks, right? I have a question. Why don't they put those fuckers into, like, the statues areas? Yeah. The ones where the statues have to be looked at constantly. Because I feel like that would fix a lot of issues. Like, is it because it's morally wrong? Because, like, the SCP Foundation doesn't really have, like, clear morals. So, like, why, what's stopping them from putting the iPods with, like, the statues that have to be constantly looked at? 
Well, with the Haunter in the Dark, only humans seem to affect it. So the iPods wouldn't work. Yeah. But I mean, like, the, st- like the peanut statue. They That's have. Not, not they have used them. They have? Did it work? It worked. Oh. The, the statue does not like the iPods. Yeah. Oh. So, anyway, back to these things. So, just to recap, these things will uh, stare at living things until they get uncomfortable. Living thing will then harm these things. These things will then explode and cause more of these things to grow out of the places where the, the goop lands, thus perpetuating their own existence. Yeah. Well, they can also uh, grow on people, but yeah. they have to take surgical... Apparently, it's extremely painful to remove, though. Yeah, so... <sighs> I don't know, what are we thinking? This... I think city would be most appropriate, because again, like, these things don't really move themselves of yeah. their own volition. I was gonna say, I wouldn't put it in a certain group, because we can tell it has some form of intelligence. Like, yeah. manipulating another SCP. Yeah. So, I'd I'd say city. <laughs> right next to Haunter in the dark. <laughs> no, no. Position those elsewhere. <laughs> that's, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> I didn't actually think it would be that strong. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, it's just the standing eyeball. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's a standing eyeball that constantly has a means to reproduce. And said reproduction can cause severe harm to people. Isn't it a fungus? No! If you, no, 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 because think about it. I called it a a fungus, but I don't think it's technically a fungus. Because the thing is, it has a stalk. Yes. It has the bulb. You destroy the bulb, it releases a dust, like a fungal type dust that spreads onto people. Oh yeah, like the goo spread the... thing. Huh. So yeah, like it's they, it's they... it's kind of like a fungus. It's like a mushroom. I mean, it could it, it's be. It's got several properties that are like fungus, but structurally it is different. Yeah. You know, the thing is, I think this is probably based off the white bang berry. Which, if you don't know, the white bane berry is also called doll's eyes. Which is a oh, plant yeah. that has, like, a red, reddish, like, stalk and fruit that looks like eyeballs. It could be based off of that. Yeah, it's been a while since I heard about white bane. Yeah. By the way, Radler, if you've said anything within the past... Yeah. Okay. Oh. I just thought I would make sure. So yeah, you what's like your before we move on? Like, uh, what's before we move on? What's your input on the SCP? So I'd like to get everyone's input on it before we move on. A real opinion. It's it's an eye that infects things. <laughs> I have no opinion. Yeah. The I have no opinion, they said. God damn it, Hatchet. Yeah, I kind of think the SCP is boring, but I don't want to say, well, I guess I said it. <laughs> I don't want to say it's boring, <laughs> but it's boring. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I mean, there are some boring SCPs. I'm yeah. calling it a boring SCP. It's fine. Yeah, everyone has a right to their own opinion. All right, so the next gosh damn it, next SCP is SCP seven two two or seven twenty two. SCP seven twenty two was found in the eastern glacial ranges of Greenland, and Greenpeace activists making a documentary on the effects of global warming. Upon yeah, this thing. Upon descending into the, the Crevice that had opened up on the southern end of the island butchered us. The Kander Lusquag Glacier 
they discovered a network of tunnels within the glacier which had long since been smoothed out, eventually reaching a series of large chambers which seemed to host a tremendous serpentine body. After another hour of exploration, the team left the glacier and headed to the nearby town of Redacted. Within hours, most of the team felt symptoms of a wide array of sicknesses, resembling everything from swollen lymph nodes to fast necrosis of the skin. By nightfall, the entire team was dead. An SCP operative on leave caught wind of the story and sent notification to high command. SCP-722 is, by all accounts, a terrestrial serpent of incredible size, length, and girth coiled through a series of tunnels of unknown origin. Most of the tunnels in SCP-722's enclosure are completely smooth, though a few patches specifically on the paths nearest to the head and the tail of the artifact are marked with some form of ancient Nordic script. All attempts to translate the script have ended in failure, and the dialogue appears to predate the settlement of the island of, by Eric the Red at the turn of the 11th century. No historical records exist of any previous settlement in Greenland, so the source of the script is currently a mystery. SC- it's fucking Greenland, John Doe. Yeah. SCP-722 is currently in a state of prolonged slumber, and many parts of the creature's body has become embedded in the glacier, possibly due to cave-ins or parts of the ice free-forming over many years. While this would normally warrant a Euclid ranking, SCP-722's immense size could pose a threat to nearby cities or the world at large in the event of its awakening. Additionally, the artifact possesses formidable defense abilities. Oh. Alright, so. So I feel like it's given away where it should go. City. Yes. City or. I thought he was said the, also the entire world. So I feel like. Well, that's kinda... actual Jormungandr. We don't know if this. We, like, we don't know if this thing that's almost certainly inspired by Jormungandr would have any such abilities. It's uh, right now. It's just a sleeping gigantic snake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big lizard. Is it a snake snake or is it like a sea snake, like the one it's based off of? I think it just says it just says serpentine body. So take it that as well, you will. It's a giant. <laughs> it's a giant yeah, serpent that a lives snake in ice. Or a sea snake in that both are technically snakes, but sea snake has paddle butt. Paddle <laughs> Nah, I don't know about that. It also can secrete potent, potent toxin. Uh, hmm. Yes, of course. There we go. Probably a sea snake then. A sea snake, although much more even tempered than the typical land snake, is typically also. A lot more deadly for some reason. Slightly. Mm. Yes. So, I'd say at most continent. Yeah, I'd say at most continent, but that seems a bit excessive. Yeah, but apparently, um, apparently it's it. It has a phylogenic relationship with some lizards and reptiles, including the Komodo dragon. Or anything in the Varanus genus. Um, I would say country, because if this thing does wake up, at the very least, Greenland is fucked. Yeah. Greenland should be wiped off the face of the fucking planet. What the fuck? Excuse me? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what's your, I what's your deal with Greenland? I can't one bad thing about Greenland besides the fact that their island isn't fucking green. It's white. 
It's covered in fucking snow. You, you do know the history of why it was called Greenland. I know, uh, not really, but again, they they, they really, really wanted. Yeah. Anyway, Greenland was called that specifically to get people to move in. So yes. it's like Iceland called that specifically to keep people away. Yeah. That was the whole point. It and was you just have a that. personal vendetta against a country for no real reason. But yeah. So we're thinking country. I mean, it is very big as a potent toxin. <laughs> Country, but it doesn't seem to have any motivation whatsoever to attack anything. Yeah, it's yeah. just big sleepy lizard and ice. Snakes. Why do they say lizard snakes? Snakes that have a connection with lizard and ice. So basically, well, technically snakes are lizard. So basically, this is kind of like the um, Leviathan. Like, it, again, it's like gigantic and causes serious damage, but it's like asleep and doesn't want to do anything at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Except the Leviathan and SCP is way, way, way larger. Well, oh yeah. <laughs> is Leviathan the name of the King of Dragons? Maybe. What'd you say, JJ? Isn't Leviathan the name of King of, of the King of Dragons? Are you talking about an SCP named after the King of Dragons? Yes, there's we did the SCP. I, well, if I then we put it in consonant because technically, if it just moves slightly, it causes earthquakes and tsunamis. Wow. <laughs> but I don't know how the. Be... I don't think Leviathan in mythology has a, much of anything to do with dragons, as far as I know. Like, it was originally a primordial being that was killed by the Jewish god to fashion the world out of in a fairly similar way to how in Norse mythology Yomim not Yomim Wonder uh Ymir was killed and the universe was fashioned out of their body. Yeah. Yeah. The the next what SCP Oh, you're right. For some reason, I thought it was the name for a king of dragons, but looking it up, its root word just means the twist term blind and or spoiled. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The next SCP is a joke one, but from what I'm seeing, it just looks like a joke, and it's actually the foundation's fucked up. <laughs> Hold on. Is everything all right? Yeah, sorry. There was in the room. Anyway, everything's fine. But uh, anyway, the next SCP, SCP seven two seven J, is a large celestial object positioned approximately one hundred forty nine million six hundred thousand kilometers from Earth, and it is, and is one million three hundred ninety one thousand kilometers in diameter. SCP-727-J is originally considered to be of considerably smaller volume. However, examination by Foundation personnel led to the discovery of its large size and classification as an SCP object. SCP-727-J breaks several known physical laws. It does not fall into Earth, but instead remains suspended above it. As well, it appears to be able to generate flame in the absence of oxygen. Study into how this is accomplished has been unsuccessful. SCP-727-J appears to have some form of 
psychic influence on the Earth, causing the Earth to rotate in a circular path around SV727-J. SV727-J also has a mimetic effect of causing itself to appear to rotate around the Earth. This uh, is suspected as a me mechanism to make itself appear more harmless. Now here's where we're, where we're going to get really fucked up. <laughs> SV727-J is capable of reaching extremely high temperatures. During testing, several Class T personnel were injected into SV727-J and were all found to be incinerated. <laughs> Continual exposure to the rays emitted by SV-727-J causes radiation burns. Uh, malevolence of SV-727-J is suspected. <laughs> I told you, the only reason it's a joke is because it got, it's fucked up when the foundation did it was fucked up. They just sent people to the sun. <laughs> what the fuck? Wow. They tried using a fire extinguisher on it. Did not work. It's just I, so, this is just so absurd. Wait, the I last have... wait the last one they tried to do to try and get uh to to us uh, get rid of it was object to use one thousand four hundred thirty five D class personnel instructed to stop, drop, and roll. Observations. <laughs> SCP-727-J failed to be smothered. All personnel incinerated. <laughs> why would they why would they think that was a I feel like Bright operated, like came up with that idea and they were like, hey, well we don't like, have any other ideas. So, so we'll use it. I I I say this should just be reclassify. <laughs> oh, because dear. this is here. Spood. Okay. Well, do we really want to put this in spood tier when it has been the cause of dozens of people's deaths because the SVP it's foundation the sun, we would die without it. Okay, no, that's fair. Yeah, okay, yeah, fair. I just think it's funny they kept sending people to the sun. <laughs> I mean, I mean if the people I mean did they deserve to go to the sun? I do. do you think actually, if you put a potato near the SCP, do you think you would fry it instantly, or do you think you would burn it? It would incinerate it. <laughs> yes. This is the sun we're talking about. Yeah, what is but your can the sun make potatoes? <laughs> no, what? Can the sun make potatoes? I want the, the sun to make me French fries. God damn it! <laughs> that is not how that works. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it is not. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just. I'm sorry to break it to you, but when you cook a potato, it doesn't just turn into French fries. It turns into a baked potato. We're about the fucking sun. We're talking Fri about a fucking fries. You fries are made in a very potato. specific manner. While I'm leaving it out certain states. You don't need to hurl it into the sun and have it become nothing. <laughs> You never heard. Don't of worry, just ask the foundation; they'll do it for you. Okay, dragon. If they throw people at the sun, I don't think they would. They wouldn't mind throwing a potato at the sun. <laughs> Actually, no. This is how the SCP Foundation makes French fries. They throw actual French people at the sun. <laughs> oh my God! There, what the fuck? Because the SCP Foundation experiment doesn't mean they went. They waste personnel that way. This was stupid to read, but they were experimenting. Kind of like psychopaths, or like if Clef was in charge for some reason. I shouldn't say it like that. Yes, I still can't believe they let Clef live. After like all the shit that he's done. Like how is no. how has he not been killed? Clef knows a lot. That's that's why. That's it. He's also very good at murdering anything. Fair point. If you try to go after Dr. Clef, you will be unsuccessful. Unless you're successful in dying. 
Yeah. I wonder who they've sent to kill Clef if they've ever sent anyone to kill Clef. Probably Bright. Probably Bright would probably oh. be the only one able to do it. <laughs> I feel like Bright is the only one stupid enough to try to kill Clef. Okay, so um, so here's my thought. Yeah. All Bright would really need to do is put the amulet on Clef, walk the body off into some nether void, and then get back. Bam, Clef gone. There have been multiple stories where Clef successfully killed Bright. Like, fully? Yeah, let's not talk about that. Oh. All I know is I went on AO3 one time to look up uh, to see if, like, any any weird Wait, like SCP just... ships, and apparently people ship right and left. No, I don't know why. Anyway, <laughs> I um, I think another person can do it. Probably the O five, or or the head of the technically the one who creates O five, due to the orbital cycle, the administrator. Hmm. He's apparently extremely powerful. Some reason, but anyway, the next SCP, um, I'm gonna try and read it as best as I can. But from what I can tell, it its power basically it can keep people from knowing much about it, kind of like five seven nine and 055, but in a different way. Why do I feel like most of it's gonna be redacted? It's not redacted. It's just nothing. Oh. It's just nothing but black bars. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I feel like there's an SCP like that. Maybe, but um, uh, this item though, um, that they, the SCP actually actually changed its own item number from SCP seven thirty two to SCP over nine thousand. Okay, so this is a joke, SCP. No, it's not. It's it doesn't have dash it's J not? to it. No, it's not a joke. What? It... Just just let what? the woman read it. All right. I will try to read it as best as I can, but it's going to sound very bad. <laughs> SCP-732 is a force or entity which hashtag percent up at and at subject is in, is impossibly witty and charming up at and uh, Oh yeah, this guy. Star parentheses. Yeah, I know what this is. Percent, percent at inches our records into fan fiction rambling Dollar sign were sent up, and subject has psychic powers and can blow pe people up with with the blink of the eye. Ha hashtag percent uh, percent up bouts are currently unknown. At hashtag for dollar sign percent, he's with all the cool SCPs. Should I keep reading, or should we already understand what's going on with this SCP? <laughs> I don't think this one deserves a spook tier. Reclassify. No, no, seriously, hold up. Uh, I, I it will be easier for me to just describe what this thing does. It is a like more information that can be gleaned if I remember correctly from the uh, um addendums, but yeah. it's effectively a guy that just shows up in media and retcons everything and can just spontaneously do it to individual uh, instances of media. So, like, he popped into a video game and just completely re rewrote the story surrounding himself. He pops into movies, rewrites the story around himself. And I, th I think he calls himself the hero or the protagonist. No, uh... He just sounds like a mild annoyance at best. He doesn't say He's anything not... about the, calling himself the hero or the protagonist at all oh, in here. Oh, I... Right, I think that was a nickname that I heard from a YouTuber. But, uh... Um, the actual threat level is that, if I remember correctly, there was an instance in which he just straight up manifested himself to some extent in reality and caused a massive containment breach. Oh. Because he's a reality bender. He's like, like the the 
the SCP document will not be able to fully express how dangerous this guy is because he's tampering with it. Yeah. Also, I like how the only picture I can get of it is the is the person holding a seahorse statue. <laughs> Could you not? What are you trying to say, Jerry? Basically, uh, that's why it read kind of akin to a bad fan fiction. Yeah. It read like a Homestuck fan fan fiction. Hey. <laughs> well, Homestuck fan fiction depends on the fan. <laughs> See, Hatch, if you weren't here, I was going to put it reclassified because I had no idea what it was. <laughs> yeah, like, this thing's actually pretty dangerous. It's a reality bender. So, is it, hold on, is it, are they smart, like, laughing how they can always get away with what they're doing, or are they just a reality bender? Um... They can get away, but not smartly. They just can't be touched. Like Got they it. can't, they can't deal with him because he just rewrites everything around him. Okay. To where he is the hero. So he okay. So what you're telling me this is he's not the oh, no. high. Yeah. He's not Sorry, the. I didn't that. Yeah. It's what you're telling me. He's not the highest level of threat of reality bending. But he's, like, close to it. I would say, yeah. He's... He, he's a... He, he's... His entire motivation is to be a LARPer, run around into different pieces of media and the real world at times, do things that he thinks are cool and or uh, morally right, and he can't be grabbed because he just pops out of existence whenever he wants. Okay. And the level of destruction he can cause is massive because, again, he figured that the SCP Foundation in this situation is super bad and he wanted to free all the SCPs who were being contained, so he caused a massive containment breach. Yeah. So, it's kind of hard to place where he would be because on one hand I feel like his powers could be used to end humanity but on the other hand he's just a dumb LARPer who doesn't want to end humanity. Right. So I don't think he would be put in XK. I think probably maybe continent mainly because I don't think he would want to end the world like the other SCPs on that list. Yeah. yeah I Is think this continent. He kind of like Sans Undertale. What? But like worse. No, 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 because the thing is, about, the thing about Sans is the fact that, like, he's... Dragon, he's not like Sans in any way okay. whatsoever. Okay. No. I don't know anything about Undertale, so I wouldn't know. Sans is an intelligent, uh, person that basically... It, he lives in a world where there's multiple different timelines, and he can see every timeline. He sees everything you do. He sees every restart. He sees everything. It's a little different. Fair point. He's smart. I would not call the child smart. <laughs> yeah. Though that one was a little fun to read, though, because I barely could read any words. Just mainly symbols. Yeah, and specifically the reason why the document itself is so all over the place is because he got his hands on it and rewrote it to be in his style of what he thinks how cool he is. <laughs> and it came out look not even like a, a bad fan fiction. It came out like a 14-year-old who just got Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So, Dragon. Fuck you, I'm not 14, I'm 16. <laughs> and also, I feel like I can actually type words correctly, unlike this fucking SCP. Uh, also, I'm just gonna give a heads warning, uh, this next SCP is gonna be really sad. 
Oh. Hmm. I love depression. Oh, Jesus. All right, description. SCP-734 appears to be a male human infant between seven and eight months of age. SCP-734 shows normal develop development and health for a child of its age and genetic background. No abnormal genetic mutations, infections, or rare cellular disorders have been found during any test, and no origin point or cause has been found for the effect SCP-734 has on human tissue. Any human tissue making contact with SCP-734 will begin to rapidly break down and flake away. This effect is most often triggered by skin-to-skin -skin contact, but any living SCP-734 cell can cause the effect. This flaking will begin at, at the point of contact two hours after exposure to SCP-734 and spread at the rate of 0 0.5 uh, millimeters per minute. The means by which the flaking occurs is unknown as no form of viral, bacterial, or chemical agents are passed by SP734 to the subject. Cells begin to lose physical cohesion and small patches of tissue begin to peel away in flakes. The flaking begins in the tissue layer of contact, most often the epidermis, and will attack the layer exclusively for five hours. After five hours, the effect will begin on the next layer and continue in this manner with all tissue layers are affected. This process is extremely painful and becomes progressively more debilitating as nerve tissue, blood vessels, muscle tissues, and skeletal structures are exposed, then eating away by the effect. No treatment or procedures short or of imitation of the affected areas have shown any success in halting progression with amputation having a success rate of 72%. Due to the non-infectious nature of this effect and its low survivability rate, blood drawn from SCP-734 has a very high strategic value and aural catheter has been installed to provide a constant supply of blood samples which are currently being stockpiled and researched for a possible application and foundation activities both convert or both convert and military sc734 itself has shown above average intelligence and psychic aptitude and proposals to train and condition sc734 to become a foundation operative once it matures are under review sc734 was removed at redacted medical hospital after reports of massive outbreak of unknown form of flesh-eating bacteria in the maternity ward. Foundation operatives quarantined the area and found several nurses, four doctors, and one infant infected by SB734. SB734 was isolated and contained after interviews with staff. The mother of SB734 was not found, and no records of her discharge from the hospital were found. It is assumed that she was affected by SB734 during birth, and died from the effect. How she was able to carry SCP 734 to term remains unknown. And that's the key to class SCP 734. I know how she survived up to term. Oh. I'm guessing the effects didn't really pop up until after they were born or during uh, labor. Yeah. Besides that, I, this is super sad and kind of dangerous, but I don't see why it's a Keter. Yeah. Like, I, I think... The song, destroy everything you touch. Yeah, apparently, apparently there's been an update. It has been approved to, um be approved for anomalous weapons testing. Which means oh. they're training it. Yeah. I don't want to imagine the sort of life a, a, a child would have being raised by the SCP Foundation. 
I mean, not all children. All children can be touched by people without killing them. Yeah. I mean, not all children treated by the SV Foundation are treated cruelly. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, yeah, but how would they even raise a child nicely that they can't touch, no matter how well they, they act? True. Yeah. Like, can I get a hug? No, that would kill me. Oh! So, I would say... I'm thinking certain groups. Yeah. Because I've noticed that there's a lot of these that we classified as certain groups. Yep. For human things. But yeah, like, I just... I, did. I really don't see how this could be very dangerous, ultimately. Yeah, I mean, I did warn it was going to be really sad. Yeah. Like, yeah, the danger no, comes no, entirely no, from touching, very... touching the child. What are you trying to say? If they grow up, then there is a chance they could be very dangerous, especially if they are removed from the SCP Foundation. I mean, technically, the kid could probably get away on their own if they wanted to, but it's doesn't seem like well, yeah, but since they seem, since the child seems to be just a normal human besides this effect, a bullet is all it would take to kill him, probably. Oh, uh, yeah. Which I don't think I need to mention. There's plenty of people with guns with the SCP Foundation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Or they would do what what they did with label. They would somehow put the um the bomb collar on their neck. So if they do run oh, off, yeah. they would just push one button, boom. Yeah. So yeah, certain group. And ultimately, like it it would be far more dangerous if like. The, if it was contagious from person to person who touched him, but since it requires physically yeah. touching him, it's not all that dangerous. Yeah. So, the sex SCP, you know how he did the sun? We're gonna do a moon. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Can I kiss the moon? No. Oh. Ah! Anyway, SCP-736 is an anomaly affecting the Saturnian, uh, Saturnian moon, Yep, Petis. For a brief period, generally lasting several days, Iapetus orbits is spontaneously altered by measures of eccentricity, orbital period, or both. The orbit of Iapetus uh, returns to his Dogmatic state after these spontaneous state changes. Models of temporary or orbits almost entirely consist of Iapetus undergoing orbital decay, and in most scenarios is projected to collide with Saturn at some point within the next 150 to 300 years. These projected orbits are in, in direct violation of mathematical models in both classical and re relate to physics. Oh, hold on. Relative. Real, or relativistic physical pr principles, which do not predict a decay in orbit of Iapetus due to tidal effects or gravitational radiation. Additionally, changes in Iapetus' eccentricity in orbital period do not proceed in a constant manner. Instead, these changes happen at different rates and relatively large intervals since analysis of SP736 began in 2007. Researchers have recorded 159 variations in the, in the rate of Neopetus orbital decay. Statistical analysis of trends in the changes of SP736 and various results of computer modeling of Neopetus Orbit has revealed that changes in its orbital decay do not occur randomly. Instead, variances have occurred in groups centered around what appears to be a central central set of 
numerical values in a series of collaborations to achieve them. To date, eight discrete orbits have been observed for Iapetus. SP736 is believed to be directed by an, an intelligent entity on, SP, uh, on September 10, 2007, during a Kassen E. Hugens flyby of Iapetus. The spacecraft was contacted by a then unknown source of radio transmissions. Telemetry analysis revealed the source to be located on the surface of Iapetus. Foundation assessed with NASA immediately seized information transmitted from the source and commenced a, an information suppression campaign. Approximately 8.2 terabytes of data were transmitted from the surface of Iapetus in a time period of 12 seconds. Analysis of the data was inconclusive, as most of it seemed to be random configurations of number values represented by a series of repetitive tones. However, the transmission has served as evidence of a sapient technology advanced presence on Iapetus. All communication attempt attempts by Foundation staff have thus far been unreciprocated. So the thing is, I have no idea if I said the moon's name correctly. Yeah. It was e I A P E T U S. I have no idea if I said that right. <laughs> yeah. But so I think this is an yeah. interesting one because I think it's uh I think it's playing off of an actual thing that happened where um a a a handful of um astrologists had not astrologists. <laughs> a handful of people who study stars and junk had picked up a bizarre, seemingly intelligent radio signal that has since been kind of, like, very heavily scrutinized, but nonetheless is pretty interesting. Though I can't remember the exact details. Right. But in terms of its threat level, it's, 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 it's a sentient thing on a moon that's millions upon millions of miles away from Earth. And it's going to take them like literally 150 to 300 years just to destroy Saturn. Yeah, like... Wait, is it... Tra wait, it's just... It's I going to... It... Yeah, it said it was... Uh, due to its orbit decay, it's going to take 100 to 100... To 300 years to destroy Saturn. No, it didn't say destroy Saturn. Uh, it or collide. collide. Yeah, collide with Saturn. I'm sorry. Collide with it. But I'm pretty sure if it collided, it's not. It's. Uh, protected yeah, to collide with Saturn at some point in the next. Uh, so. yeah, well, it's like, really going to cause damage. It's gonna it's gonna hurt Saturn, but Saturn's constantly getting hit with shit just like every other planet. It'll just be a particularly large collision onto Saturn. It would so, wipe all the dinosaurs on, on Saturn. What? Right. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know I didn't know that you were on Saturn. Hey, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I like you that set one. yourself up for it. But anyway, um, in terms of threat level, this just doesn't seem that this seems like a non-issue threat-wise. I would say yeah. spoof tier. We're putting a lot of things in spoof tier. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a useful category. It's a useful category because it's for things that are interesting and or cool, but otherwise aren't all that dangerous. rather than just pile everything into reclassify.